I do use a lot of different media, uh, slides, videos, and stuff to illustrate, and I hope uh, I, you know, keep that effective. So uh, this is the lady we're going to be painting. There are eyes. I want to show you a couple of examples from other artists. Um, all of you, most of you, well, all except a few probably have seen uh, my painting and actually watched me demonstrate. Um, I want to show you a couple of the artists and their versions of it. Uh, here's an artist, uh, and I forgive me, I've, I lost, uh, it's a, a lady. And uh, the style, uh, the style she has, if you look real close, uh, she does a lot of layering. Uh, um, so she lays down uh, color and uh, layers on top of each other. Uh, that's how she gets the three-dimensional look. Uh, if you see the roundness of the nose, those are created because um, of layers. And then as you move up, um, as you move up, there's less layers on the top of that nose and they become lighter. So she uses that technique all the way around. And, and also I kind of like the way she uh, uh, uses. What stopped me on this is uh, looking at her use of purple violet in the cold areas. Um, usually, uh, most people, that's kind of scary. And uh, I still am very careful not to use too much of that. But I think she's very effective in what she's done there. And you all can ask any questions anytime you have one. Uh, and then um, uh, this one, this one represents one um, that a way that a lot of watercolor uh, painters paint. Uh, it's fairly flat, and uh, uh, you can see that the uh, strokes uh, are uh, softened quite a bit, and, uh, but uh, it's an example of more of a, a flat, lighter type style. And uh, this one is by uh, Hector uh, Trunerik, if you can, well, you see it, you can pronounce it for yourself. Um, and uh, then uh, this is an interesting one. This is a painting. Uh, it's on done on the wall. It uh, looks like it's actually acrylic. I want you to think about um, what it took for this person to take a photograph and transfer that into a painting. And his paintings are what's called super realistic or ultra realistic. And uh, he's going for having that painting look exactly like photograph. Now, uh, that's not my style, but uh, why I bring it up is the attention this is re that's required to detail uh, is amazing. And uh, the ability to do that uh, I just wonder if he would be able to paint um, a surrealistic or somewhat representational painting. I don't know. Uh, anyway, that stopped me. Here's another realistic uh, painter. Um, this is a painting. It's done in acrylic. And you can see, um, <laughs> look at the detail of the eyelash. Can you imagine what it takes the attention to detail uh, to paint something like this? Now, I'm showing you the extreme for a reason. And uh, if you hold on, I'll explain it to you. Uh, but look at the eye, the attention to detail of getting these highlights correct. And I'm not suggesting that we do every detail but I do believe that some of these details are, are important. The highlights are important because it establishes that the eye is shiny and damp and wet. You know, it's got the uh, 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 solution on it, that's whatever you call that, tears. Um, and if you don't, then that eye is not going to look that way. And the other thing is this subtle lightness in here suggests it can be just continues to tell the viewer that the eye is round. One very important part, and I'll harp in over again, that you very ever see the entire eyeball, I mean the uh, uh, pupil, 
the whole pupil. It's usually covered up and bottom with the eyelid. The only time you see it is somebody is bug-eyed or scared out of their wits or, well, maybe born that way, <laughs> to include that. And then the other important piece I want to remind all of you is really paying attention where the eyeball starts. Here's the end of it. That shape there is very important. And this shape here is very important. And, um, and getting that right really makes a big difference uh, in how your portrait comes out. So there's a the close up of it. Um, and then I, I don't paint this much detail, but I do uh, would suggest right along here, the top of the bottom of the lid is lighter because here it's catching the light. See that? It's catching the light. Um, I very seldom ever put the eye uh, brows into this detail or the lashes, but uh, just to show you attention to detail, what that would look like. So it brings us to today and what we're going to do. Um, I do want to do just a quick show and tell. Um, here is a, uh, I'm doing a series on veterans and uh, here's a uh, gentleman that I am working on right now. I took the picture and uh, the approach I'm using with this is number one, I'm really focused on the tones of the, um, uh, his name is Orlando. So I just noticed I need to clean my fingernails. I've always been told whenever you do a demo or a class, make sure your fingernails are clean. But these are painters fingernails, as I digress. Anyway, uh, and the other thing I really wanted to make sure is he has, um, when he smiles, it, you can see it's a, I think a very unique uh, mouth structure and he smiles with his uh, mouth closed. And I tried to get him to laugh. And when he did, or when the smile showed his teeth, it just didn't look right. So most of the time you see him that way. So here is my, uh, this is where I am with that. And um, uh, so a couple of things just to show you that, just to re re reinforce that, is let me tell you what I read in here. I read in his, if you look up here, to me, I saw quite a bit of pinks and a slight tinge of yellows. So I, uh, again, painting is all about translating what you see. It, obviously, it's not done. And then um, the mouth, uh, I really, I had, I spent a lot of time, believe it or not, with this mouth. Uh, doesn't mean I paint a lot, but I really was focused on uh, getting this structure right and the length. Uh, the only thing I've got to do is, is I think fix this spot right here. It's a little bit dark. So let me, uh, let me zero in a little bit on the eyeballs. And uh, I know Rob, this is, you like uh, realistic stuff. So there he is. And you can see now the detail, it looks a little bit different, doesn't it? Uh, mm -hmm. That's what I love about watercolor. Uh, a lot of, and let me, this is the point I really want to make here. When you're painting, lot, oftentimes, and well, more than often, almost all the time when you're painting, you're looking at it about at this level. You're looking close at it. And what happens is you forget what that looks like as an overall painting. So look at that, I can see right now, I see a lot of flaws and a lot of things that, you know, just may me not be perfect. The, the one thing I say I want to fix is this green eyeball, <laughs> but I'm not done with it yet. But look when you come back from it. A little bit different. And this is how actually this painting and all watercolor paintings are viewed. And when you look at the overall structure and the overall painting, it looks uh, different. So what? So sometimes you're sitting there and you're over, what I call over painting. Um, you're, oh man, that, that doesn't look right. 
And that's why it's critical for you to stop and, and move back 15 feet from that painting and see what it looks like. Because you're gonna do things to that painting that you don't need to do or ruin it because it doesn't look right up close. Now, if you, and I don't, if you painted this to be uh, ultra realistic, then every little detail is important because I would be, I want, if you do ultra realistic, you want people to be able just to zoom right in there and see, oh, look, he's got, oh, that artist got the eyelashes. But that's not what we're after. So, any comments or questions before I move to the next little item? So, everybody, everybody I want to make sure everybody got that point and, and appreciate it. Comments? Okay. Okay, so uh, the next uh, uh, next thing, real quick, we're going to start painting in five minutes. I do want to show you a uh, example of a painter, uh, and let me pull that up. Example of a uh, so real I, what I did. I just took a uh, a uh, a video of someone painting an eyeball an eye which I, I really like this painter and uh, and just show you um, as an example of a level of detail that's not ultra, but somewhere between, um, you know, uh, doing an impression or doing your impression of what that looks like. So let me pull it up for you. I'm pulling it up, yeah, as we speak. Let me get my face off here so you don't see me doing funny faces. Open with... Uh, and Alice, are you taking notes? <laughs> <laughs> She's Hi. fiddling with her drawing, I can tell. I'm doing the oh. same thing. <laughs> there we go. I actually, uh, have been taking some pictures of your pictures. Oh, wow. Well, good. I'll uh, this video I'll make available to you. Okay, here we go. Um, this will be fast forward, and uh, uh, he paints a, uh, or she paints. A, I think it's, no, it's him. Uh, paints a little bit like what I do. Um, a lot of mixing happens on the paper and blending. Mm. And look at the. Uh, not a lot of detail, but just enough detail. And um, she makes sure that she gets the shapes right, includes a shadow that is cast from the upper eyelid. It casts a shadow on the eyeball itself. So she's captured that. And then... Um, after she gets all the shapes, she goes back and what she does, she's a, on doing a search for getting the values right. So uh, that upper uh, part of the eyelid, you see the little white area that captures, catches some of the light, I mean the lower eyelid. Uh, it's, let's see if I, uh, it's that one right here. Let me get my, whoops, well, that's it. Oh, there we go. <clears throat> All right, have my I believe my can y'all see that? Now here she's putting in um, a little more detail than that I I would not put all those lashes in. However, um, it works. Uh, she's she's really kind of in between ultra realistic uh, to an, more to the interpretation, um, but still quite a bit of an interpretation in this. And uh, I like her style. Uh, that's kind of the approach, very similar to what I do. Uh, she did use, if you caught it, she did use some opaque white uh, to whiten up that little spot she missed in the eye. 
So that was uh, Jadan. And um, so anyway, how many of you were ready to do some painting? What was the name of that artist that you just did? Uh, his name is uh, J-A-D-H-A-V, that's Jadhav Mohan, M-O-H-A-N. Uh, he has a number of YouTube videos, uh, if you Google him. And, uh, but anyway, uh, that's his style. So if it resonates with you, uh, it might be something that you might want to look at. Okay, Thank so you. let's see if I can get out of here. All right, there we go, I'm out of there. Okay, uh, so let's take a look at uh, what we're gonna paint today. I've got a couple uh, things we're gonna look at. Let's see if I can find it, there it is. Uh, so anyway, uh, just a few things, uh, probably can't see all those dark lines. Uh, so we're going to do the eyes and let's see if I, do I have a close up of her? There it is. There it is. Uh, that's the one I was looking for. Um, uh, so a few things, uh, I want all of you to look at your reference photo and let's really make some notes in our minds about this. Um, First off, the shape of her right eye will be on our left side right here. Uh, if you'll notice, um, this area right here has darkened because the light source is coming from this direction here. So it's going to cast a shadow right here. So this is, I'm going to walk through how to read this. And when you paint it, you got to kind of think of this as you paint it. And then um, the reflection is quite important. She's, it's obvious that she's outside because the reflection actually reflects a uh, almost like a house back there. But you don't have to paint the house in her eyeball, or I mean her eye uh, pupil. Um, but putting in some of these highlights will be very important in adding it. And you can you can kind of make it up a little bit. But in the center is that black iris. It's partially covered because of the reflection. OK, so let's move across. You see that shape right here? I'm going to move my hair up. That curve is critical, even though we're using a reference photo and maybe I copied it with a uh, projector. And then if the top of the bottom of the lid is a little bit lighter. All right, so let's give that a try and see if I can duplicate that. I'll uh, zero in a little bit on this and please stop me if you want to, uh, want me to hone in a little more. There we go. Give me some eyes, give me some eyes. There they are, okay. A little bit more. Okay, so you all have this uh, reference photo. And uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to paint the eyeball first, the very first thing. And you can start anywhere you want, actually. I start there because it to me is kind of like the center and the reference point. If I, it seems like for me, if I get that eye ball right, I have a better chance. So I'm going to, um, I read her. She doesn't have blue eyes. She doesn't have green eyes. And she's got somewhere in between now. Uh, something about like this, if you can, hopefully you can see that without reflection. Uh, so I'm going to layer in the first, I'm going to mix these up as I go. I'll show you how I do that. So here's the green. So I'm looking very close. Um, at the reference, very close. All right, so I'm going to, I'm putting, uh, this is going to be darker, but I'm putting some green. And as I go, I just, I'm mixing it with some blue, various shades, ultramarine blue, um, cobalt blue, and it looks like forest green. I'm just mixing these. 
This is only my first layer. I'm going to leave some white in here. I'm going to put a little more green here and there. So what it does when you when you back up from this, I'm always thinking about what it's going to look like after I'm done. And I left some white. That's just the first layer. And so I'm going to do another one for you. Now I want you to get yours out and use a little blue and green. Keep it light. It's your first layer. The reason you want to put it light because uh, this will be the values that some of the, uh, the eyeball will keep. It won't change. And I leave some white showing, kind of a random. So let's all give that a try. Are you ready? Any questions? And then I want, and then if anybody wants to show that to me, uh, I'm going to stop right there. I'm just adding a, just a touch more color while it's wet so it blends. But you can see. And uh, yeah, go ahead and paint. So that's kind of what it looks like from a distance. Did you use your two? I use what? What size brush? Two? Oh, that's a two. That's right. Mm -hmm. Good observing. A couple things I noticed is that this area right here, uh, when you paint this, this reference line is not right right here. The eye doesn't go quite over that far. So I'm going to fix that a little bit. I can always, I'm, I, what I can do is test it. And if it doesn't look right, right to me, it looked like it was a little bit too, that line was a little bit too further over there. Well, Okay, so you've got that. So let's go ahead and let's put um, another layer of uh, blue. And by the way, my, uh, I think it's cobalt blue. I think it's opaque. And I'm not sure why that's in there, but I was doing something. All right, this time I've got some deep blue, ultramarine mixed in with this. Ultramarine. I'm getting at much deeper. And I'm going to add uh, just a little touch of burnt sienna to my ultramarine. And what you'll get is a darker, much darker blue. So I took ultramarine blue, added some burnt sienna. And now I have not just a dark blue, but almost a grayed dark blue. And I'm going to follow that outline that the eye has. They all have these little outline. So right along here, I'm going to darken that. See that? See that? With that dark blue. Now, I didn't use black. And generally, it kind of goes kind of like that. There it is. I didn't use black. And then I'm going to go up here to suggest the shadow. And then what I do, and while it's still wet, I soften up the edges of that line. I soften those lines up. I don't want those to be hard. So what that does, it begins to get that eye to look three-dimensional. So I used ultramarine blue to make that color and added some burnt sienna. And I've used that, uh, I, uh, let me get some tape. I used that to give me another darker color. It's in uh, the tone I have, what I'm looking at, I, uh, 
I like the tone of those colors right now. I think that's going to work. Uh, it's what I see in the eye, that greenish blue. How y'all doing? Uh, no answer means you're really okay. Good. Okay, we're doing okay. Okay. It's early. <laughs> yeah, okay, so let me give you a second to finish that up. And if you're still painting, you're probably over painting. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Just suggesting that. Now I'm going to take my ultramarine. I'm going to add some burnt sienna to it to make a very, very dark blue. Ultramarine blue, burnt sienna. And it's almost black. And I'm going to paint the iris that I see. And I'm going to keep that kind of, I don't, the whole iris is not, it looks like reflections are poking through. So if you see what I'm doing, I'm not making that a solid circle. Example. I'm not doing the eye like the, the little, I'm not doing that at the center. What I'm doing is just making a suggestion of that circle like that, very loose. Because I still want to continue to, it to look like it's a, um, a rounded and there's uh, reflections coming through. So it is, it is taking shape nicely. And now here's a, here's a fun one. I'm going to show you this is really cool. I kind of discovered this. Um, I'm going to use my uh, magenta or my uh, magenta quinacridone, whatever you have that represents uh, the red on the blue side. And that's what that looks like right here. And what I'm going to do is I'm a, the black I have on my palette. I'm going to mix that till I have a really, really dark, dark red. So basically, what this was is that um, red, or I think it's magenta quinacridone. Um, so that would end up being that quinac uh, magenta ultramarine blue and burnt sienna, that's the combination with more red than the others. And if you look at that, it's very, very dark. So with my number two watercolor brush, I'm gonna follow the contours I see right along here. I'm gonna follow this. So everybody, if you, have, if you can take a look. So what I see is there's the white here. It comes all the way over here. I'm gonna follow what I see there. Um, I used to use black here. I can always darken it, but I find that uh, if I start with this color, it doesn't get so black quickly. So there, that's that line here. And I've captured this. And then I'm gonna go right along here. And I'm following that. Now there's some shapes in there I'm not going to pick up because I'm using my interpretation. And uh, it goes right along here. The line gets light, hardly any line at all. And that shape goes like this. You can see it. That's what I see. Now, while it's still damp,
while it's still damp, and I work at um, almost vertical, thus I have to continue fighting it from wanting to fall off. I got some big tape this time. So uh, it's still a little bit damp. Uh, what I'll do right now is I'll take a little bit of the engine yellow and add that mixture I just had, Indian yellow. And I'll, uh, I'll just put some along this edge and get that next value in place. So that this color right here was that dark red I had and added just a little bit of my Indian yellow, which gives it a orangey and over here, I'll go ahead and put that value I see right there. And I'll, I'll make sure that it gets spread out a little bit like that. So you can see it's starting with just adding just a few of those values. So this color right here uh, was that dark red that had ultramarine, um, magenta quinacridone and bird sienna. I added a little bit of my um, Indian yellow. And I like that shade. It looks pretty similar to what I see there. So I'll just bring, while I have that in my brush, I'm gonna bring just a very light wash over it to get that next value started. And painting is all about uh, the search for values. So, um, so look at mine, you can see it's starting just by a little bit of, like that, you begin to see it starting to look like something that you want. And I do the same thing on the bottom. Uh, I'm, right now I've chosen not to um, put the eyelashes on because I don't really, not really sure. And all of you can read this the way you want. That's what I like about this is I put that across there, but then I'm going to pull some of that down with just what I'm doing is just with a, a damp brush, I pull some of that color down. So it gives, it sets me up for that next value that's going to, that's showing up for me. Okay. Do, uh, does anybody like to do a show and tell and get some input on what you're doing? I have a color problem. Oh, what color is the problem? I was using permanent magenta instead yeah. of quinacridone magenta. Yeah. And it doesn't, the red doesn't come through. Oh, yeah. Okay, hold that up a little higher so I can see it. There we go. I can't. Yeah, um, it looks good, and I see what you mean. Uh, what you'll have to do is... Um, I have quinacridone magenta. Yeah, well, you should... Didn't get it out. Yeah, start with it on the line and then add it to the paper. Try that on a little practice area. So what that looks like would be something like this. Um, quinacridone, 100% this time. Try it this way to make sure you get your red. That's 100% quinacridone. I can then add my darker, darker color to it, which is that black. And it will get still keep that. And then when I put my yellow, Indian yellow, I can pull that. So I still remain. What I'm wanting is. All I'm wanting is this color, this dark color, to have a slight red tinge to it. So actually, that's a little bit uh, too red. But if I'd done it, it there's my. Well, it's not watercolor paper, so it's not spreading right. But uh, you can start by just using that and then uh, adding your um, ultramarine blue and bird sienna to it. Uh, okay. You, yeah. 
Thank it, you. Uh, it kind of sometimes depends on the paper and the amount of water you have in your brush. It's all, those are the variables. So um, that's kind of what that eye is turning out to be. As I look at it, I'm going to use this solution I have, uh, this real dark red. And I don't want to use black. I can use black. I used to use black here. And it really made a big difference in uh, how it came out. And I read this line here. It's not a, a real uh, defined line. It's soft. So I put it down and now I'm just softening it up. But I want to get that line. It's the top of the uh, wrinkle in the eyelid. So if you see, here's that line I added. I softened it. And that's what it looks like. And while I'm there, we have the same thing. I'll continue over to the other side of that wrinkle. And it's pretty. And then I'm going to just add some of the that pinkish color I had. And I'm probably going to have to go over it again, but I'm going to just I'm reading those values. Yeah, the whole thing is just sitting, you're constantly looking at your reference photo and saying, do I have my shapes right? And how am I doing on my values? That's what you spend, you're, it's almost like nonstop. Values right? Is that shape right? And if you do that, um, and of course, <laughs> having the right colors, but it's amazing what you can do if you just have your values right and shapes right and colors could be wrong and still come out okay. So uh, I would like to take a second and for some of you to uh, show me on your camera how you're doing. And uh, who wants to be, who wants to be first? Okay, Rob, let me get my, uh, there we go. Okay, now um, when did we start the uh, the uh, um, glasses? Uh, you're you're muted. Unmute, unmute yourself. Okay, I'm unmuted. Uh, now, when, when did we when did we start the glasses? No, this was uh, left over from the end. Oh, okay. All right, then I I'm going to give you a buy on that. Yeah, uh, that's, uh, that's nice. Now, uh, I want you to look real close, just at a couple of things, is on that eye, on her right, the line that is on the inside of that, her right eye, the line, let's see if you can find it. See if you, can, you point to that and I'll kind of move. That line is too thick. I'm looking at the reference photo and uh, it doesn't look like it's that thick. If you look at um, my example, I'll show you what I mean for one line. Oh, by the way, I like it. <laughs> and, uh, but I'm always looking for improvement. That line right here you have, right yeah. along there. Look at yours. It looks like yours is very, very thick. And if you look at the reference photo, see if you see that, that line being thick. Now, uh, there is some shape that's right in here that I'll go ahead and add. But you have a very thick line. And there's just, there are two lines there. So that's, uh, Rob, there's an example. As you paint, you really have to stop and look at your reference photo. Uh, and so what I did is I had that line. So kind of watch it. Uh, other than that, you already know what I'm going to say. It's a uh, nice job. Okay, thanks, Fred. Okay, who's next? Should be mine. All right, and there's Linda. Oh wow, it's backwards because it's on the actually it's reversed. It's because of the camera thing. Well, it is for you, but not for us. Uh, oh, okay. 
so uh, that's very nicely done. And uh, the only input I have is, I'll show you on my. Okay. Um, is your line right here. Mm -hmm. Check and see what you have there and see if, if that line is as thick and, and the value is right compared to your reference photo. This line right here. The line, uh, okay, I'm going to add some more. The line above it, I think, is too hard. I yeah. think I should blend it out. So yeah, and you can, I, yeah, and you can soften yeah. that by pulling some of it over. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'll do that now. Uh, that's a, uh, it's a brilliant job. Anybody else? Okay, Deb. All right. Okay. Oh, those beautiful colors. I love it. Yeah. So you change the color up. Uh, get me a little closer. Um, first off, use of values, you're dead on the money. Um, and I think you are doing a good job looking closely at your reference photo. Uh, is that correct? Um, I don't know, I guess. Okay. Well, let's guess. Uh, that's, a, okay. that's a lovely job. You're dead on the money. I love you jumping into what uh, color is that you're using? It's a, what, what shade of, uh, is that a, a, a violet or purplish or red violet or? Um, that was just the magenta with a little bit of the um, uh, French ultramarine there. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. I, I really look, I like how it's coming out. It's uh, nicely done. Very nice. Uh -huh. Thank you. Hey, okay. yeah. Okay, we have time for one more. Anybody white. else want to okay. play? Okay. All right, Margaret. And uh, oh, hold that up a little closer. Okay, Margaret, that's nice. Um, uh, you're yeah, you're in a search for uh, the values. Maybe uh, we'll find out if it if it works into it, um, the, you may have gotten just a little bit dark, but I can see, uh, I can see that it's pretty accurate to the, uh, to the reference photo. Uh, great observation skills there. Oh, okay, thank you. What's that? Oh yeah, and you're welcome. So let's continue on. We got an hour of fun left. And when, I don't know about you, I'm starting to really have some fun now. Um, you're, you're all doing so far really a nice job. Number one, continue to pay close attention to the reference photo. In portraits, it's not, it's very difficult to pull off uh, interpretive painting unless you're going for abstract or impressionistic. If you're really wanting to pull it off, some of these shapes you really got to pay attention to. So um, with that in mind, I'm going to just continue to read. I'm going to continue to read. I'm going to come over here now to this line. And this is uh, magenta uh, quinacridone that's been darkened with that black solution. And I'm going to um, see if I can capture what I see here. So it, that line um, starts right here. It goes, you see that it goes right down like that? It's that line right there. Looks like it starts here. And I, I keep looking at my photograph while I'm doing this. And it goes like that. That's what I'm reading here. And it's, uh, and because she has mascara on, uh, again, I use black. I always come back later and put black in, but I put a real dark uh, red, reddish black here because the mascara and the eyelashes make that look very dark. So I'm just kind of, and I can just make that edge a little rough to suggest. And I'm just, oh, and I'm, I'm really just following, I'm looking at that reference photo as I put this in, see if I can get it right. And I'm gonna do the same thing for the bottom. Um, And I see it go like this. There's one line across like that. 
I'm just going to pull some of that color out. There we go. I added just a little bit of Indian yellow to that to get the color I'm using right here. That's Indian yellow plus that uh, magenta mix. Um, those of you who have taken my class know that I use a lot of <laughs> Indian yellow. <laughs> Is New Gamboge close enough? What's that? Is New Gamboge close enough? It is. Yeah, it's very close. It's a uh, orangey yellow. Mm -hmm. I've used that. Everybody I take a class from, I end up buying new paints. I've got don't so do paint. that. I no, you don't that. need to. Not yeah. here, you don't. Yeah. Oh, you can if you want, you know. So I'm just, look here, I'm just really paying attention. What I want you to do when you do your uh, portrait you're working on for yourself, I want you really to force yourself before you put a stroke down and look how that stroke mimics or duplicates the reference photo. Now, I'm not putting everything in there, but I'm putting some of the main uh, characters or the main, uh, what, what I call them, are the shapes that give us the reading because uh, we're always reading uh, the values. So what I do is I'm just continuing adjusting those values and reading my photograph. There's no way I could pull this off. Uh, I can already see some things I don't like, but that's the time to do it. I don't think that's rounded right there. I fixed that shape. So I brought in some of that. Fortunately, I keep all those colors on my palette. I'm now coming back in on the eye and adding some more values I see. I'm gonna do that on both sides. They're just a little bit darker than what I have. There we go. Better. Okay, so, so um, you really, it's kind of nice you get practice since there's two eyes. It's the, uh, the only example like that is the ears that you get you practice twice on a portrait. Um, so, wrinkles. Um, so, to capture that wrinkle, again, I don't want to use black for those wrinkles. I've seen people use black. It doesn't seem right to me. Uh, again, I just use that dark red mix I had. And I just draw that line. And then what I'll do is come back now, I have to decide how many wrinkles I'm going to give her. If I was doing this as a commission piece, I probably would take a few out. <laughs> like, duh. <laughs> so I have those lines in place. And what they'll do is they'll stay there to give that suggestion. So. As I put this next, it's a, it's a wash I'm putting in here. It's just another wash. And that wash, I looked at my palette and I found some color I liked that had that red and, and a little bit of that Indian yellow. And I'm just gonna put a wash across here. And it's gonna be darker right here. See, it's, it's darker, uh, deeper color right across here. It's deeper. I'm reading that. And then up here, I take my brush that's clean and I pull that over. So as it goes to the right here, it gets lighter. And that's the top there. So it's really, uh, I'm just going to add a little more color at that. And so at that crease, it's a little bit darker. So that gives a suggestion that it's rounded. That's an important little. Uh, data point uh, for us to read when we see a portrait is that. I'm really, you know, really paying attention to those shapes. It's deeper and it gets lighter because that eyelid is rounded. If I don't put that in, 
then it's going to suggest that it's not rounded. And what will happen, it won't look, my painting won't look three dimensional. So that piece right there, that going from a deeper color at that line and going lighter as I go to the right is critical to get that to look like a uh, three-dimensional. Um, some students I've had uh, also have uh, comments that uh, my painting looks flat. And as you look at it, um, it does because all of these opportunities to give these shapes three dimension are not done. So every shape I'm looking at asking, how do I give it that three dimension? So I'm gonna come back on this side, see if I can give that shape some three dimension. Right? And guess what? I think I can. And part of it is the shape that's going to help suggest it. Now, again, this is, I'm still using that mix of the magenta with the quinacridone magenta ultramarine blue. And then I'm adding just a little bit of Indian yellow right here to soften this shape here, as I want it to look three dimensional. So you see that it's getting lighter. And as I go across, it gets even lighter. See, that shape there is so important for that to look three dimensional. I did read, um, that's why I left it a little bit more on the yellow side. I did read just a tinge of yellow in her skin. Um, I can adjust that, but right now that's what I'm reading. So it started, if you look close, it started with this magenta color. And as I moved out, I allowed it to move to the Indian yellow. And at the same time, it got lighter by adding more water. So every shape that you paint, be looking for opportunities through values to get a three-dimensional look. Oh, we're having fun now. I almost forget you guys are there. I'm sorry. I'm going to add uh, another little value here. It looks like it could be a little darker. Uh, by the way, I'm painting around the eyeglasses only because the eyeglasses are not solid black. I'm going to need um, just a little bit of light coming through on some of those uh, frame, the, the frame parts. And if I were to go ahead and just paint it black, it wouldn't represent, it wouldn't be three dimensional. Again, there's an example. I need to get those glasses to look three dimensional, not like a flat piece of metal st sticking on her face. So everything we do, we're trying to get three dimensional. And we do that through values. Shapes and values suggest the three dimensions. And I'll repeat, if you don't do that, then what you're going to have is a painting that does not look three-dimensional. And by the way, if that's a look you're going after, I'm okay with it. Some people, um, what they'll do is they'll do a painting and actually a composition, and they'll include an area or a shape that is three-dimensional, three and then they'll throw in a two-dimensional. Um, and of course, that's a whole different context, but uh, that's more of a compositional type decision. So I'm, I'm going to go ahead and start putting in some value here. I've still got the, my number two. I could go to a larger brush. Um, I'm not going to. So what I'm doing, I'm just reading those values I see. Looks too yellowish. So I'm going to add some more of the uh, color. Now I see some pink in there. I'm gonna to go to my opera rose and give myself just a little bit of pink in there. There it is. Just a little bit of the opera rose. If you've got opera rose or rose modder, uh, that would work. 
I'm not going to leave those lines solid. I'm going to soften them up. So I got, see, it just gives that little bit of a pink tinge. So that was what. And then this value here is way too dark. So before it dries, I lighten it up. So there it is. That's what I see. Um, when you uh, put a, a shape like this in and you're not going to finish it, be sure that you soften up the edge so that the next layer can blend itself into it. See, the edge of here is not sharp. This edge is not sharp. I softened it. Because now when I come back with my next layers, it easily blends into that. If it were sharp, then it would leave a line. So I'm gonna, uh, I know you all are painting. A couple of you are listening, uh, but I, uh, as I go back from this, let's all take a minute and step back from our uh, painting, uh, all of us, 15 feet, and uh, take a look at it more holistically now and see if, the, uh, if it's beginning to take shape. So I did, here's mine that's backed up. I'll back it up a little more. So get up or whatever you have to do and get away from your painting and see if you actually need more detail somewhere or something missing. And what you're gonna find, you may like what you, are, what you have right now, which would suggest stop tinkering with it. You know or there's something you want to do. So I look at mine and I say, well, you know what I don't like? I do not like this eye. To me, it looks too dark. So how do I lighten it? Put a little water, scrub some of that off. I still want some of those highlights in there. Don't want to lose those. But now is the time I can do it. There we go. That's getting what I want. Same over here. Too, too dark. So we're always on a quest. We're on a quest to get the values right. So that looks better to me. So as we move away and put our values, I'm going to use that um, Indian yellow with my magenta and uh, I like that combination. At least I change it up almost every time. So I'm gonna put that right up here. It's almost, uh, I was gonna say peachy, uh, maybe kind of peachy, but I'm reading this shape above the glass frame. And I'm going to put a touch of more of the red right in there. There it is. And uh, by the way, uh, we have three dogs. So I spend half my time getting hair out. <laughs> Me too. I have a cat. Yeah. Okay. Then you know. And a dog, but he's hypo. I don't know. Uh, you know, change the filter seems like every week. It still uh, doesn't seem to work. So this shape I put in. I mixed it kind of while it was on the paper, but it's just the beginning. It's going to be darker. Uh, I didn't want to go dark yet, that dark until, or, I, no, until I got that first um, layer in there. It's going to get a little darker right in here. But that's my first, uh, let me zoom in on that. I hope you all are enjoying this. Give me that thumbs up if you are. There we go. Yeah, I know, Rob, you, uh, this is right up your alley. Does anybody have any questions? Anything you want me to emphasize, go back and show you again, or questions you have at this point? Because I think you might have some. When are we going to cover in the white? Um of the eyes uh, we on can the side. It. Yeah, we can do that now. Okay. I was just thinking about it. All right, I'm looking at my palette, see if I've got something. What I'm looking for is a grayish, 
mud that maybe have a tinge of uh, flesh to it. So I don't know if you can see it. Uh, that's mm -hmm. what that. That's what that looks like. See that? It's a a gray, mm -hmm. light tinge of pink to it, and it's very light. So I'm going to use it. I'm just going to put one layer in and see if that's enough. And yeah, it is. So it was. Um, so what that was? It was ultramarine blue, burnt sienna, and a touch of the. Um, uh, magenta and a touch of the Indian yellow, but it was very grayed out. It was hardly any color to it at all. It was more of that gray. I still got some work to do in the uh, pupil. I need to go back in and, and uh, darken a little bit, but it's it's really kind of coming close to what I want. I use cerulean. Cerulean blue? Well, with the mix, yeah. Okay. Right. Anyway, um, everybody kind of has their own thing for how they do uh, black. And it's always you know, two complements together. So are we ready to move on? What I like about having glasses is you can focus on inside one glass at a time um, and then you can always, because there's a line, you can stop. You just have to remember what colors you're using, of course. But um, I'm going to go to a larger brush. I'm going to go to number three. Uh, actually, I'm looking for number four if I can find one real quick. Let's see. I don't want to use a four. I guess I'm going to use my three. I'm going to use a three as it's handy. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a wash uh, along here. Now, those of you who have been to other classes, we have different ways of starting. Um, I often start by putting a, a complete wash over the whole thing. Um, my preferred way to do portraits is more cellular like this. And, uh, and the reason being is I can get, um, I can, it, it better helps me focus on shapes and less, because uh, you, you work on such a large area sometimes, uh, you miss a lot of the uh, important details. And in a portrait that you want details, I find doing it this way, more cellular aids. So anyway, back to the painting. Here's my number three. Uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do a mix. I'm gonna start over with the mix. I'm gonna start with um, the magenta color. See how red it is? And I'm gonna add just a touch. Uh, you won't even hardly notice it, but a touch that opera rose. So it looks very, very pink. And then I'm going to add my favorite Indian yellow. There it is. Now it's very orangey. And I'm going to add just a touch of my ultramarine blue. Just a touch. That might have been more than a touch. So there it is. It's very much, a, it's a very pinkish flesh tone. And I'm going to just do a wash over this whole area. So this is a consistency of tea? Of what? Is this a consistency of tea? Tea? Tea, like you drink tea. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah, it is. Now, what I'm doing, I'm putting this on. I'm adding a little water where I want it lighter. Okay. So it's not a solid wash. It's 
darker in here, but very light down here. And making sure I pick up a puddle. I don't want any puddles left there. And when you do this, you're gonna immediately, what it does, it, uh, it changes the whole composition of that section. You'll watch, all of a sudden they'll say, wow, wow. So hear me say this, okay? Wow, wow. Okay, I said it. See what I mean? It just kind of now gives that a whole different perspective. Now you're getting a very good idea of how this whole painting is going to go. This is the technique that I think I'm going to use in order to paint the entire painting. Very important. Watch your reference photo. Number two, make sure you get the values right. Don't go for the, uh, uh, on, a, on portraits, try to stay away from um, black. Um, about the only place you'll see black would be on frames of glasses and um, eyelashes or uh, mascara sometimes is black. A lot of people use that. But don't, don't overdo that because it will, even though it might look that way uh, at first, it really isn't. It's, uh, it's something you probably want to take, uh, see if you can match the uh, values. So right now, I'm just going to, I'm doing a, what I call my value search. I'm using this flesh tone to see, I'm going to back to my number two. Now, the reason I'm using number two is because I'm working on a uh, quarter sheet. Um, and if I wanted this probably be less um, detailed, uh, working bigger tends to force you uh, to work less detail. So I'm on a value search right now. I, I may not, don't be concerned about getting that value right the first time through because it's just a matter of adding some more uh, layers or more paint. So I'm looking at my photo and I see some shapes that I want to kind of capture and they're very subtle. So there it is, subtle, subtle. It's right, goes right along here, that shape. See, I'm really, I'm watching that shape right there and see if I can get it. I think I'm getting it. And I'm just using that flush tone that I mixed down here, except it's more, uh, it's not like tea, it's more like uh, black coffee. Mm -hmm. gather. Mm -hmm. Look how that shape uh, with its contour makes a huge difference in making that look three-dimensional. Light right across there. Look at how that really gives that a three-dimensional look because every shape I put on, I'm looking for how I can make that shape three-dimensional. Okay, let's stop for a second. Anybody have any questions? Something that you want me to cover or well, anything, except we won't have time for the meaning of life today. No. That's reserved for another time. Okay. I'm going to, uh, again, right now I'm just on a search for values and shapes that I've, I've just, all I do is look at my, I sit there and I'm really reading my uh, photograph. My eyes aren't done yet, but I'm going to reserve that for a little later. I'm going to kind of see uh, how much I need to do to it based on the values that I have on the rest of the composition. Sometimes when I do it now, I often make them too dark. And that's what I did earlier. I made them too dark. So well, right now, yeah. On the other side, on the eye on the other side, there's a sunlight 
line coming through. We should yeah. strive to get that saved, right? Yeah, that would be a good time to save it. If it's an important uh, piece, matter of fact, uh, I'm glad you said that because I really meant to do this side with the wash. Let me show you. To make that look like sunlight, I'm just going to put the wash. I started at, watch this. I started right there at the uh, same color. I started here. See, now I'm going to bring that wash over. And as I come down, it gets just a little bit lighter. So I'm just going to add a little water to it. Always looking for a, a way through values to make this look like it's three dimensional. Mm -hmm. So there it is. So it's, it's that much deeper color up here, but as I got up further away, I added a little more water to it. Mm -hmm. And see what happens. Now you really points out, see how that shadow now plays? It really looks like the sunlight is hitting you there. But I started with this line right here, making it the same color. And while it's still wet, it's a little bit I added some little texture here now. And it's, uh, it always amazes me as you just continue to focus on making sure every shape has the contour right. You know, that shape is right, so it looks three dimensional. Because uh, there, I can't, hard, except for the front of the, well, even the tooth, I was going to say is flat. No, it's rounded on the edge too. Um, yeah. Every shape you put on when it comes to a face, it's going to have a contour it's going to be rounded. And if you can get that right consistently, you're going to find the overall painting is going to be awesome. I want to say a couple things about eyebrows. Um, I paint eyebrows last because uh, it's the, to me, I look at it, it looks like it's the layer. It's the last. It's usually uh, a, a darker layer that goes on top of everything else. So anyway, I'm reading, I'm continuing reading this and I see some things I want to adjust. I need to fix the value right here. It's much darker. So now's the time to fix that value. And here it's a little bit darker. I don't just go hog wild and put a bunch of dark color in there. Oh, uh, just a minute. And every, uh, if, if you notice, almost every shape I put on here, I'm softening it or uh, mixing up its value so it looks three-dimensional. Every shape, I'm trying, every shape is to get that shape to look three-dimensional. Shapes are lines, shapes are circles, just about anything. Okay, so I, I'm reading this and I see that right along here, it's a little darker. I'm gonna soften that line up because I want it to be three-dimensional. So at the edge, I just soften that up a little bit. Every line, see, that, that looks three-dimensional. I come across here and I see this getting a little darker. And I soften that up. I want that to look three dimensional. And the bottom of this to look three dimensional. So every shape is three dimensional. So see how about yours, but I can back up from it. It really is starting to look like it's looking like a person. Oh, my goodness. 
And, and also, it kind of looks like the person you're painting. Weird. And that's done by, I'll overemphasize this one more time. You'll probably hear it maybe 10 times, maybe more. But um, what I did is every shape, I'm concerned with making sure I read that shape from my reference photo. If that shape isn't on my reference photo, I don't paint it. And I try as much as possible to mimic a copy of that shape. Also, every shape that I paint, I want to make sure it will help the overall composition look three dimensional. Thus, every shape I look and see if I have painted it in a way that made it look three dimensional. That's done by shifting the values. And when you paint, you could put uh, your paint down. And as you go away, you put a little water so it lightens it up. And so those are just like, that's, you know, doing a wash 101. Okay, I said it again, so good. Does anybody want to show their painting now? Because we're going to move on here a little bit. Okay. Well, it's starting to look a little better. Okay, wait on. Uh, Vanessa's first. Oh, okay. Okay. Oh, wow. It's beautiful. Beautiful, oh. beautiful, beautiful. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Uh, the inside, hold that up to just uh, double check the reference photo. And on the inside of her eye, it looks a little dark. So, okay. Yeah. But uh, very nicely done. Okay, uh, who's next? Jennifer, I thought you were next. Hi. Jennifer, did you want to show yours? Yeah, here I am. Oh, nice. Hold that back a little bit from the, okay. Now move it closer, I like that. Okay. Overall impression. Wait, I have to get rid of the old one. Okay. Okay, yeah. Uh, the value, look how the values really, uh, each value, each shape, you try to make three-dimensional. What a difference that makes, doesn't it? What do you think? Yeah, nice. Yeah, every shape, very nicely done. Wow. She may be the teacher's pet today. <laughs> uh, and everyone qualifies to be their teacher's pet. Now, a lot of you qualify more for being a teacher's pest, but uh, we won't go that. <laughs> okay, anybody else? Oh, okay, Deb. I want to see this. Oh my, the colors are just scrumptious. I want to go in there and I want to, I can see you've been under uh, Kathy Durden's uh, teaching. Uh, those are beautiful. Uh, hold up just a little closer for me now. So here's what you did. I don't know if you always do this, but what you did is every shape you had on there, you really were looking to make sure it's three-dimensional. And uh, also you were really sensitive to the uh, photograph as to uh, the values and the shape that you're getting them right. Thus, what do you have? A beautiful painting, just gorgeous. Oh. Gorgeous. Thank you. Thank you. I thought I maybe went a little bit too dark on the shadow, but. Yeah, well, just, I don't, uh, you, you, you have established that value. So every time that value shows up on your reference photo, you've got to have it that deep. So it'll be consistent. Okay, thank you. I think I'd leave it just like that. It looks awesome. Uh, you may get the A for the day. I, I don't know yet. <laughs> Anybody else? Sure, man. Oh, good. I was hoping I could pick one. I mean, I hope I can uh, see yours. Very nice. Wow. 15 oh, uh, feet. Yeah. You can take it back from the distance. Yep. Um, you really were paying very close attention this time to the reference photo. I noticed that. Uh, you can see it. And also, um, all those shapes, you're really focused on getting those three-dimensional. And as a result, you've got a three-dimensional painting started here. 
and it looks realistic. Okay. Uh, were you Thank going you. after a realistic look? I'm not sure, Ron. <laughs> it's developing. <laughs> okay. Who's next, Margaret? Oh, yes. Yeah, hold it right there. Now bring it up. It's beautiful. Nicely done. Nicely done. Nicely done. Uh, you know, Margaret, uh, those shapes around the eye, you really showed the um, three dimensions of those uh, lids and the uh, breaks at the wrinkles. Um, it, it has a beautiful three-dimensional look and natural look. Uh, so that's just a very, very nice job. Very proud of you on that. I don't know if you normally paint this way, but that's just beautiful. Nice. Thank you. Thank, no, thank you for sharing that. I, I enjoyed that. Anybody else I can make encourage? I have mine on the screen. I yes. don't like the one on the right. I don't like the right eye because I... I Oh, it's the left eye on mine. Yeah. Well, can, anyway. you, uh, can you back up that a little bit away? I want to see it in the distance. A little further, a little more. Okay. Yeah. Now I want to get the overall feel. Uh, yeah. I tell you, you got the values right. Um, wow. I, I know it, it, if you look at this too close, you're going to be probably over critical. Um. Okay. I, think. okay. I think that's a great example of stepping back and saying that's a that really is a nice job, Linda. It really is. Mm. I would not uh, do anything more to it. Well, it gets overworked very quickly. Yeah, yeah, and that's why um, there's a reason why I say that because you know who uh, definitely does that uh, through the aid of a you know, a screen like this, I can always sit here and I can back, and I do this when I paint, I just watch the monitor and I have the camera on and I just, instead of getting up, I can just, now, now that I think about it, I probably should get up more. But anyway, anybody else? Did we get everybody who wanted to share? Good, we got them all. All right, let's continue. All right, so the theme of today is, Watch, watch, watch your reference photo. Okay. Now I won't repeat all this stuff. So you all know. So what I am going to do now is um, uh, just make sure I'm my values right. And for me, I don't like the eyes yet. So I have to go back in because they do not look three-dimensional. And the reason is I, I lightened them up. So now I can go back in and maybe get some suggestions of some three dimensions. And uh, there we go, something like that. Careful. And there's one thing I'm going to show you here in just a second that you should really think about. I think I don't, I'm going to have to draw this on a piece of paper to show you what I mean. All right, so. On a piece of paper, an eyeball. And here's, I don't know why, but um, so if you look at the eye, let me zero in on this a little bit. Oops. The remote control sometimes controls the wrong camera. But anyway, that's fine for them. Um, the eye. Here's a mistake I make, a lot of people make. So here's the opening of the eye. I'll just sketch it with my. Is right here. I'll show you how not to do it. is getting this shape along the edge, right? So what sometimes I do, I have to remember if I drew the whole thing and if I could see the whole thing, it looks like that. 
So that's why it doesn't look like this, the straight line. Or it doesn't look like this. See that? It's going to be more like this. And I get those shapes wrong sometimes. I think I might even have the shape wrong in this one. So I'll have to fix it. But when you do the eye, oh, oops. Think about what that looks like if you could see it, that the uh, pupil. If I could see the pupil, it maybe looks like this. So I don't, of course, paint the top part of it. But think about, it's always round. And so what I want to do is only paint that part and make sure this so kind of look and see if your shape right here is correct. That shape right there. In your mind, think about if I, if I continued the circle, would it be right? So I'm looking at mine now, and I don't think it's right. I've got to fix it. I'll show you what I mean. I can get my pencil. Now, of course, I did this on purpose just so I could illustrate this. I'm not sure if I, if I drew that, it would maybe, I don't know, I might have it right. See what the line I'm drawing here? Yeah, well, maybe it's okay. I was worried about the nothing. But in your mind, that's what you have to do. I think, I think it might, yeah, it's right. All right, it's right, never mind. But to check it is go ahead and, and you can either do it with your pencil or in your mind say, let's draw a perfect circle. Because these curves right here are critical. If you get those wrong, uh, you got the wrong messaging for your uh, painting, your viewer. I hope everyone kind of understood what I was talking about there, but that's a, a very good piece or a point that uh, we should take, it, take into consideration. So uh, the other thing is um, not as much on this painting, but a lot of them is uh, right along here, there's a shadow past, and there should be a little darker right here at the top. And that line suggests, it's another piece that suggests that it's three-dimensional, this line, that line. Because that line suggests that um, something is covering it, which is the eyelid, and casting a shadow. So it's another data point for the viewer is three dimensional. I'm gonna add my pupil. Oh, I like that. I think I'm liking that. I'm just gonna come in and soften up some of that. Yeah. All right. There we go. I got I got the Oh, that was going to bother me forever. There we go. And step back, take my own medicine. So, so I'm going to finish up some of the shapes I see, and I'm sure all of you, that's what you're doing. I'm gonna put that little shadow I see here. I want all of you to get out, um, if you have it, the painting you're gonna be working on later today or sometime after this class. I wanna see it, the reference photo. So if you would get that out, I'd like to take a look at what you're going to paint applying what we did today. Okay. Who is going to start? Always wonder who is going to start. So what are you going to paint? Who? Me? Yeah. yeah. Anybody? Yeah. Well, I haven't decided yet. Okay. Anybody who has decided, would you show us your... I have it. Okay, good. Here's the photo. Oh, wait, hold on. Let's get Alice first. Oh, okay. Uh, all right. 
Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a great. Um, okay, so tell me why you picked it. Because she means a lot to me. I also love that um, there's a lot of uh, challenge to it. Yeah. Well, just think what we learned today. Everything we talked about today is dead on important in this. See that? It's they're very similar eyes, you know? Yeah. yeah. So, uh, yeah. So I want you to start on the eyes just like we did today. Okay. Nice. That's really, it's, it's got a lot of nice values. So that'll work out great. Jennifer, what, what do you got there? Yeah. Uh, now kid. that's a, don't tell me that's a grandson. That is. Nice. I did the other one. He was all orange. I'm trying the next one now. Did you uh, take that picture recently? Yeah, I took it after I watched your video on how to do the uh, half dark and half light. Yeah, that's excellent. That's it's, it's a perfect photograph for watercolor painting. Perfect. And it's hard to be perfect these days. <laughs> Anybody else? Okay. Yes. Could you do a portrait from a black and white without too much trouble? Yeah, you can. Here's an example right here. Oh, okay. Um, so you're going to redo this, right? Yes. Okay. This is a photo This will be awesome because if you apply what we learned today mm -hmm. to this, it's going to be an awesome portrait. That is every shape you put on there. Do I have the values right? Does it look like my reference photo? And did I make it look rounded or contoured? And this will be a great one to do. And um, yes, a black and white, all black and white does is just gives you another challenge to get the, uh, <laughs> the colors right. And by the way, you can do it in black and white too. Okay, Margaret, you got yours? Oh, good. You got your, okay. Can you see that? Yeah, I'm, I can see it even better now. Yeah. Oh, that's going to make it. I love that. The way the light comes down on that and that those uh -huh. shapes. That's I love gonna, that photo. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. That's going to be a good one. Great. Thank you. How are you going to sketch that? You're going to use a, 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 a projector or you're going to hand draw it? I, I'll just have to sketch it. Okay. I don't have a projector. Okay. Who's next? That's really cool. Oh, I'm doing the same one Jennifer's doing. Same one? Okay. Let same me look one. at that again. Yeah. Uh, uh, I'm so glad you took that photo after you took a class because uh, look at the, uh, the lighting is perfect. You got a little light thrown on the other side of the cheek. Um, when we do this, we're going to pay close attention, very close attention to every shape contributing to the three-dimensional look. And that's going to be awesome. Wow. Good. Thank you. Anybody else want to share? I have All right, just a second. We're going to go with Linda now. All right. Oh. <laughs> oh that's okay. Cute. So this one. Yeah. A lot of the ones. Uh, in first off, I love the, the colors. So you, I think you'd want to try to match those. Yeah. But this is all about getting the facial expression right. Yeah. This, this is a painting about a mood. Mm -hmm. I think she uh, she related to you. She's my neighbor's little girl. She's very cute. That'll make she a. Gave me some pictures to practice with. Yeah, that'll make a lovely, lovely painting. Okay. Yeah. I'm going to try that Thank one. You. Yeah, I would. Who's next? Okay, Deb. Okay, we go. Okay. All right. Oh, wow. I love <laughs> that one. That's going to be a challenge. I, is I thought. Is it? Is it it's, no, it's just a, a fellow that I saw at a picnic, but I thought maybe I would do him in monochromatic because I don't know about the skin color. I've tried to do them many times and it never came out right. So maybe I would just do a monochromatic mm -hmm. unless you have an idea of what colors to yeah, use. Yeah, I do. I do. You, um, you do. Yeah. Now let's, let's just hold up your, okay. uh, hold up your photograph. 
this. Okay. okay. So let's read real quick. What colors do you see in there? Just stepping back. Uh, I see a lot of, uh, let's see, quin, quin colors, maybe um, quin oranges and stuff. Lots of orange. Yes. Orange. Uh, yeah, orange. And then it moves Purple. to the, and the orange moves to the bird sienna and the bird umber side. So you would start with an orange base. Um, and any combination, you uh, don't use an orange already mixed because you want to be able to vary that up a little bit. I would start with something like, uh, uh, I would start with a, uh, any red you have with um, a, an Indian yellow. And sort of see okay. if you can match up the lightest orange you see. All right, um, the lightest. Okay, and transparent then, orange. Yeah, okay. and just play with it on a sep sep separate sheet of paper. It's going to be very close to the orangey color. And then as it gets darker, the next way of getting it darker, you use, use burnt sienna. Okay, burnt sienna has a little blue in it um, and a little bit of the complement of that. So what you're okay. going to see is, it, and use that to darken it. And to get it even darker, do not use black or anything blue. Use uh, burnt umber. Okay. Yeah, because those are pure colors um, that you can't mix uh, very okay. well easily. Okay. And then put the, do that on a practice sheet of paper. Practice, and, okay. Um, yeah, and the lips uh, will use the similar color, but as it moves into the lip area, it's gonna move toward uh, the reddish color. Hold that up, I don't think it's pink. Yeah, it's, it's going to be, see the orange uh, lower lip and that orange transitions to red. Okay. So those are all your colors. Then up in the eyes, uh, around the eyes, the dark area is where we're going to use burnt sienna to darken it. And at the last resort, we're going to add a touch of uh, ultramarine blue if we need it to get it to that final darkness. Okay. But that's uh, that's why I, that's the approach I, I think you you should go ahead and try to do it in color. You might as well, because uh, this, uh, I love the shades and colors of this photograph. Mm -hmm. I, I, I lightened him a lot. He was yeah. much darker because yeah. uh, he was very, very dark. Yeah. 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 And you don't have to make it that dark. Uh, just be consistent. Okay. And the thing is that his, I know he has false teeth. Uh -huh. So, but I don't want to make them that bright because yeah. it's kind of, yeah. that's yeah. all you'll we see won't. is the yeah. teeth. Yeah, we won't. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'll all show right. you how to do the teeth if you are already know. So I might, yeah. I might just, I might just do the eyes because that's all we yeah. did today. Yep. That's all, right. all I do. But all it'll right, be an you. orange base and using, that'll give you a chance to see if it's, uh, if you can get the values you need out of burnt sienna and burnt umber. Okay, good. Thank yeah. you. Mm -hmm. Anybody else? Okay, uh, real quick, let's go round table. Uh, what did you gain out of today? Let's hear it. What did you learn? Anything that was helpful? I love the skin colors. Good, thank you. Anybody um, else? Brad? Yes. Uh, it would be um, uh, considering more Trying, trying to achieve a three-dimensional look. Good. Yeah. Well, that's, yeah, that's, I only said it 15 times. I'm sorry I overdid it, but yeah, that's just, it's critical. Very good. Thank you. Anyone else? Try to avoid going too dark too quick. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, that's, uh, so when you do your, uh, painting like and if you kind of follow like we did today is just just don't get in a hurry to get dark you can always go darker but get the shapes right and if you step back from it often you're going to find out you don't need it darker mm -hmm. that's the key stop and before you get it dark um, step back and take a look at it you're gonna find i don't really need to make that any darker very good anyone else learn anything I 
I just agree with what everybody said about, especially being three dimensional. Good. So anyway, let's recap um, a little bit on what we're going to do next. So this is uh, the approach that we're going to take each week. And uh, we're going to paint along. Uh, we're going to look at each other's <clears throat> and make progress and look for those opportunities where we can, you know, learn something because each of us probably would have approached this differently. But today you're you're trying my way. That's what you're doing. And if you like it, you'll probably do it some more. You know what I mean? And that's kind of what when I go to workshops, I just want to know. I'm going to try it the way the instructor is and see if I like it. So I appreciate you all doing that. I think it'll pay off because something will come out of this that you're really going to use. And uh, so we'll, we're going to do this pattern until we get the entire painting done. Uh, it'll take us six weeks. In the meantime, the beginning of every session, I want to look at your, I do not just me, all of us want to look at your painting and the progress and um, offer ideas. It's not, it's not as much as a critique as focusing on you know, things that you really learned and make sure you want to apply and suggestions on how it could be, you know, uh, adapted or changed a little bit. Uh, and you already, you have already seen how I critique. Um, I never laugh at anybody's piece or anything like that. Um, there are some funny ones though. So, uh, but that's, the, if it's okay with you, that's the approach that will continue down. All cool? Okay. Cool, thank you. Okay, good. I'm glad you're all here. It's it's awesome having some new people. And uh, uh, as we, the more we meet, you're gonna find the more that uh, we share from each other. And uh, when we, when you put yours up and we talk about it, other people are listening and there's a lot of value in learning that, that way. So have a great week. And uh, uh, the, uh, Confab on Sunday, if you have time to watch it, will be uh, 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 Marilyn Beatty. Uh, she's uh, awesome. She's already sent me like hundreds of paintings she's done. And uh, I think you really will enjoy it. Um, if you don't have time, I'll, I'll have the uh, uh, video up on YouTube doesn't cost anything just drop by and have some fun i see it's raining where you are uh linda it's raining it raining like crazy yeah yeah if we send it down this way we could use some more okay all right Not don't forget i'm expecting you all to work on your painting so if you don't i'm gonna i'm gonna just i'm gonna reach in there and do something so anyway thank you all Okay.